That sucked, guys. I don't even know what to say to this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do that again. Hi, I'm Divya Chander, Medicine and Neuroscience faculty at Singularity University, here for Ask an Expert, the show where we take your questions from the Twitterverse about the topics we cover at SU. Damn, this bird. All right, this is a question from Carl Heath. When do we expect to have a clear understanding of the brain, and what would that discovery mean for humanity? Got to ask you, Carl, what do you actually mean by clear understanding of the brain? We understand a lot of things about the brain right now. We understand certain bits about how it communicates at these junctions called synapses. We understand a bit about the circuitry, but really understanding the brain? Are you asking me, do we actually think we could reverse engineer and build a brain? Are you asking me, could we break the brain apart, look inside and read everything that it was thinking and communicating? If we were to try to reverse engineer a brain, let's go that way. Let's try to build a brain. Let's get to the point where maybe in the next five to 10 years, we map every single cell and every single connection. Would that make you real? Would that make that brain conscious? I don't know, what do you think? Do you think being conscious is an emergent property of brains? Or do you think there's something else going on? Now let me throw another one out there at you. Would you even be conscious if you lived in a black box? Does it take us looking at you to make you self-aware, to endow you with consciousness? Do we actually have to observe you to make you real? All I can say is that we know a lot about brains. We're going to learn infinitely more in the next five to 10 years, maybe in the next hundred. I'm actually wondering whether or not learning about brains will allow us to jump beyond them and get somewhere else. Maybe we won't need our brains at one point. Okay, this question is from J.E. Rodriguez. How is neuroeconomics impacting knowledge of the neuroscience of decision-making? Well, neuroscience of decision-making, that's kind of a game theory question, it sounds like. Yeah, that's a game theory question. So how is neuroeconomics affecting that? Well, if you imagine that we're all programmed in some way to maximize gain and minimize risk, then, of course, neuroeconomics is definitely influencing the way we make choices. But it doesn't always do that. And in fact, we do some really stupid things to help other people. That's called empathy. Turns out, actually, rats do it too. If you actually do an experiment, and this experiment has been done, where you lock up two rats in a cage, and you let one of them out, and you give that rat a choice of getting to chocolate, we're letting the other rat out so it can share the chocolate. It actually feels so bad for the rat that's locked up, it goes and lets it out first. Turns out that empathy may be also hardwired into our system, into our biology, and we don't always make choices based on gaming theory. So I'm gonna ask you to tell us in the comments, do you think we're just hardwired to maximize our gain and protect our own genetic progeny? Or do you think that empathy has a place in our evolution? Or do you think it's just a learned thing? Do you think animals are ethical and empathetic, or do you think it's just humans? You tell us. What? <laughs> All right, this question's from Lucas Pinney. What does he think about LSD and using LSD for treatment? Well, first of all, Lucas, I'm a she. And what do I think about using LSD for treatment? All right, so LSD is in a class of drugs that are called psychedelics. Psychedelics lots of psychedelics like LSD and ketamine, what they tend to do is they tend to dissociate connections in the brain. That's actually a really useful thing to do because part of the problem is you're so wired to do things and think things by habit, by rote, that you can't overcome a lot of the things that you're kind of habituated to do. But if we give you LSD and then we actually talk you through, say, therapy, we might be able to break some of those connections that are causing you problems in the first place. <laughs> Just a different way of learning or rewiring the brain. So yeah, you can actually use LSD in controlled conditions with the right professional in order to get to certain places. And in fact, LSD, ketamine, and other types of drugs like this are now being used to help treat things like PTSD. Again, you want a licensed professional, and I'm not advocating you run out and get some tabs of LSD. Thank you for watching Ask an Expert. Check back next week for a new episode. And don't forget to click here to subscribe. What the hell is that?